What's up guys, this is FameBRM943 and today I'm going to show you how to install the Hammer Editor. The Hammer Editor is used for every single Source Engine game that you can possibly think of. Team Fortress 2, Half-Life 2, every single Half-Life for that matter, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, Portal 1 and 2, you get my point. Every single game that is done in Source Engine, the level editor that is used is the Hammer Editor. So today I'm going to show you how to make some maps using the Hammer Editor. So the first part is, of course, to get the Hammer Editor. If you're doing it for a game other than Team Fortress 2, and I'm sure there's some other problems, what you do is you hover over your library, and you go to Tools, and you find Source SDK. And you install that, it's completely free. And once you have that installed, launch that, and make sure engine version and current game are the ones you want. Even though it says Team Fortress 2, and in theory it should work, it doesn't work for Team Fortress 2, uh, and this is because of the Steam Pipe update. Um, but for any other game, pretty much, just double click Camera Editor, and it'll work just fine. Now, since I'm not able to use that for Team Fortress 2, there's a slightly different way to do it. What you do is you go to your C drive and then you do program files x86 Steam and Steam apps common scroll down to Team Fortress 2. This is your TF2 game folder so anything here is where you'll find all your game files. Uh, you'll go to the bin folder, scroll down, and you'll find hammer.exe. You can double click that, and that will launch the Hammer World Editor, which looks like this. So, in order to first start making a map, you do File and New. And that brings up these four windows. This first window in the top left corner is your 3D textured view. If you press Z, that'll capture your mouse. You can look around, fly around. It's like a first person game. Mouse to look around, W, A, S, and D to move around. And the other three views are two dimensional views. This one here is your top down view. It's like a bird's eye view of your map. And these two bottom ones are side views of your map. Now, the very first thing you need to do is to make something called a brush. What you do is you click on this white cube here, and in one of your 2D views, preferably your bird's eye view, just kind of click and drag. You want to make it a decent size. I like 1024 by 1024 to start off, and you hit enter. And what that does is it just creates your uh, your brush. Now, if you want to, you can press Z while hovering over your 2D view. You can see you can kind of look around and fly around, and this is what you have so far in your map. So now if you press the red arrow, which is your selection tool, you can move this all around. You can change the size of it by clicking on any of these nodes. You can do whatever you want to it. I'm going to move it down. Now, maybe I want it to be... 8 units thick instead of 64 here. Um, I can't do that because it's snapping to the grid. So one of the things you can do if you press the open and close bracket keys not simultaneously you can change the size of the grid. So if I press the open bracket key a few times it'll jump down in multiples of 8 and I want to make sure it's down to 8 units. So I can scroll in using the mouse wheel and you can scroll in and out and it bases where it scrolls off of where your mouse pointer is. If you want to mess around with that and see how that all works, go ahead and take some time and do that. Um, so I just kind of dragged the node down here up until this number was 8.0 because I wanted my floor to be 8.0 units thick. That would be this measurement here. So now, let's put some walls on it. 
you could use the block selection tool again, or block creation tool rather, and make some more blocks, maybe over in here and this one. Personally, I like to just take an existing brush and duplicate it. How you do that is you hold down shift and you click and drag, and that creates an extra one. And then you can click on nodes, and I'm going to make my wall 8 units thick and 192 units tall. 192 is about one story. A lot of the doors are 128 units tall or so. So now I'm going to shift, click, and drag this brush over here so that it's the opposite wall. And then I'm going to shift, click, and drag a little bit just to make it another one. And drag this on over. Make that the right size. And then I'm going to shift, click, and drag this over here. And then I can take this, the floor, and raise it up to above the ceiling to create the ceiling. Now, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure that all of your areas are enclosed either by walls and ceiling and floor or by something called a skybox. I'll get into what that is later. Because if the game sees any of this black void space, then it's not going to know what to put there, so it just puts what it had there last, and it looks really weird, and I'll show you guys what that looks like later. But it doesn't look pretty, and you don't want to have it on your map. It just confuses people. So next you want to make your player spawn point. What you do is you click on this light bulb looking thing called the Entity Tool, and it activates this toolbar right over here, uh, it's the one that starts off with move selected to world to entity and by default it's going to have categories set to entities and objects set to info player team spawn and that's what you want it to be all you have to do to create this is just click somewhere in the world and then if you click your select tool you can move on in and look at where your guy is you want to make sure that he's slightly off the ground like he is here because if he's not, then the game isn't going to be able to place the player, even if it's perfectly flush with the ground, like that. Even though there is that little tiny gap of space there, uh, the game won't be able to place the player in any spot. So what you want to do is you want to reduce your grid down to like one and move them like one unit off the ground. Also, you might notice if you see this X here, you can kind of notice it isn't really on any grid space. Well, it is now, but when you first place it down, it's probably not going to be on any, on any grid space in particular. So you can just kind of drag it around a little bit and it'll snap onto the grid and everything will be awesome. So we've got our four walls, we've got our floor and our ceiling and our spawn point. So at this point this map is ready to run. So all we have to do is up here we click this button that says run map. It's going to prompt us to save it. So I'm going to save it as tutorial 1. And it'll come up with this. You just want to leave run BSP VIS RID. You want to leave all these settings exactly how they are. And you can choose to run the game after compiling. I'm going to say no to that because I've already got my game running here. And okay. So it'll come up with this window here and it'll run through the compile process. It's going to be really quick now that we've just made this map because it's literally just six walls and a spawn point. But once you get into more complicated maps and lighting and all that fun stuff, it's going to start taking a while. So now that we've got that down, I will go off for a little bit and I will see you once we're in the game. Alright, welcome back. We are now in Team Fortress 2. One of the things that you're going to want to have enabled is the developer console. If you don't know what that is or you're not sure if it's enabled or not, 
all you have to do is you go down to options and then you go to advanced and if enable developer console is checked you're good if it's not check it and hit OK if you're not sure what key opens up the developer console scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's right here under toggle developer console it's usually the key that has the tilde on it that's going to be usually in the top left of your keyboard so if I press that key it brings up this console here so what you're going to want to do once your map is nice and compiled is you type in map and then whatever you named it so in my case tutorial one it should come up in the autocomplete below if it doesn't that means your map is saved in the wrong place you want to make sure that it is saved under the maps folder which is in the TF folder of your Team Fortress 2 game files which I showed you how to get to a little bit earlier so once you got that command in there you hit OK and probably didn't although that has happened multiple times with me and you get this it's as if you just joined a server so go in there you can pick whatever team you want it didn't we didn't specify a specific team so I'm gonna pick red whatever class you want and here we have our wonderful box it's pretty much just a box it's got our six walls it's our floor and our ceiling we can't walk through any of these we can't do anything about getting around I'm not sure why it's making trails behind me but anyway um, yeah we can pretty much with this knowledge you can no, I'm not doing it anymore um, anyway with this knowledge you can pretty much lay out the framework of an entire working map with any goal system that you want and I'll get into how to change around the textures, how to do lighting, things like that later on. But for now, we've got our map. And that's pretty much good. So that's our map so far. All right, as I promised earlier, I'd show you what it would look like if you didn't have the ceiling on. This is what it looks like. The reason it's doing this is that Let's waste them. it doesn't know what to put up there because we haven't told it what to put up there. It's not just going to put black, so it's trying to figure out what to put up there. Uh, you can notice it's getting blurrier and blurrier up at the top where the class selects is still sort of remaining, and that's because I have motion blur turned on. Um, but it's just kind of getting worse and worse. If you shoot, it'll still show up, and you can pretty much fill up your whole screen with just bonks. And it looks terrible. And this is why we fill up all holes in our maps, because otherwise you get this. And you don't want this. So that is why we fill up our maps edges and holes just so that we don't get this so a lot of times you'll use something called a skybox and I'll show you next video how to get one of those